Now, Kantar is said to have been uh, the leader trying to open up a new front for Hezbollah in the Golan Heights, essentially a new front uh, that Israel would have had to deal with. What information do you have on that? Yeah, well, I, actually, you know, the Israelis, uh, one, it would be safe to say that his assassination was preemptive, not that uh, the brigade meant to launch guerrilla warfare against the Israelis in the Golan Heights was an immediate threat to the Israelis. Uh, now, Qantar was involved in building a Druze Hezbollah, and the Druze community, be it in Syria or Lebanon, uh, is not really, does not really sit well with such a proposal. So one can make the claim that his assassination is not something good for the Israelis, but it is also good for the Druze community, both in Syria and Lebanon, and also for the Syrian regime, if you will, because after all, uh, the Syrian president is not really interested in opening a front against the Israelis in the Golan. So this could benefit both Israel and Syria, is what you're telling us. Tell us more a little bit about the, the calculus for Israel, if indeed it is Israel that carried out this strike, the calculus for Israel in, in these kinds of circumstances, because when they carry out uh, precision uh, uh, bombings in these neighboring countries that are all opposed to Israel, enemies of Israel, it, it's always very difficult to, to carry out these attacks in a very volatile region. You never know exactly what the fallout will be. So what kind of factors do they have to balance? Well, of course, you know, the Israelis have a superb intelligence apparatus, and uh, they have their people on the ground. And uh, usually, I mean, uh, their record at uh, conducting uh, such a precision attacks is well known, and uh, it has been demonstrated time and again over, over the years. So, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, the Israeli intelligence is highly professional, and uh, their military capabilities are superb, not only by Middle Eastern standards, but by international standards. And they are proficient at doing this kind of work. But Hilal, my question is more about the, the regional political fallout. They're targeting, they're essentially yeah. bombing a foreign country. They bombed Damascus here. Yeah. Uh, what do they risk? Nothing. <laughs> you know, the Syrian... Uh, Syria is, a, is shattered by civil war, and uh, this is not the first time the Israelis launched such an attack uh, inside uh, Syria. Again, I mentioned earlier that in 2008, they assassinated Imad Mughni, the key in, uh, officer in Hezbollah, and the Syrians did not respond. If the Syrians did not respond in peacetime situation, there's certainly no reason for them to respond at a time when the Syrian army is is embattled and is busy fighting against troubles throughout the country. And, you know, they, the Israelis know what they are doing, and I don't even think that the Iranians would uh, threaten their achievements with the U.S. with regard to the nuclear program and risk an attack against the Israelis right now or even later. You bring up the example of uh, Imad Mugnier, an important uh, Hezbollah figure who was indeed assassinated. You could have also mentioned his son, Jihad Mugnier, who was yeah, uh, killed January. more recently. Yeah, last January, of course. And, oh. you know... You mentioned that there's basically no risk of an escalation with Syria. Syria, especially the regime in Damascus, too busy waging its own war, of course, protecting itself. What are the risks of an escalation with Hezbollah, however? Well, you know, uh, I really doubt it very much. Again, Hezbollah will say that we will choose the time and the place for avenging the assassination of uh, Qantar. But let's be realistic. Their options are quite uh, limited. Right after the end of the July war in 2006, uh, uh, Hassan Nasrallah, Hezbollah's chief, was asked by a journalist, he was asked, had you known the consequences of uh, your uh, raid on an Israeli uh, patrol inside Israel, would you have uh, done it? You know, would, would you have uh, launched the operation? He said, Hassan Nasrallah said, no, mainly because of the devastation for Lebanon and the, the death of more than 1,500 Lebanese Shiites and uh, uh, the flight of more than 1 million Shiites from the south. So let's be realistic. Hezbollah will never put the community, the Shiite community, which is the basis of its 
support at jeopardy. So he's not going to put the Shiite community at risk. So essentially you're telling us that Hezbollah uh, doesn't want to, to risk the, the, um, the well-being and the lives of its own people in Lebanon. One assumes that perhaps also it doesn't have the means to open up a new front as it's already stretched fighting uh, in Syria. That is true. I mean, even without even without Hezbollah's heavy involvement in Syria, you know, in classical terms, Hezbollah is no match for the Israelis. So with or without the war in Syria, Hezbollah's reaction wouldn't really have differed much. All right. Hilal Kashan, thank you very much. Shedding some light now for us on uh, the impact, limited impact, tells us Hilal today, uh, of uh, the uh, airstrike yesterday that killed a Hezbollah figure in Damascus. Thank you very much.